you already reached point 22 of that video and this one is about the altimeter. But what is an altimeter? The altimeter is the tool in your watch that will give you your elevation. I realize after testing several watch that most of them have one, but only few of them have a good one. There is three ways to define your altitude for a watch. The first one is by GPS triangulation. But I can tell you after testing some watches that use that only two to get your elevation that it's not so good. I mean, it works, but it's not very accurate. Let's say, for example, that you start at the parking lot at the foot of a mountain and you climb the mountain and come back down by the very same trail. Your watch might tell you at the end that you have climbed 900 meters, but you only descend 812. The other much more reliable method is the barometer. But what is a barometer? Well, it's a tool that can detect the atmospherical pressure. Okay, but what's the point of having this into a watch? Well, the higher you go in elevation, the lower the pressure is. And it's like that everywhere in the world. So thanks to the barometer, your watch can detect your elevation in meter only thanks to its barometer. Now on the same mountain, we could get our 900 meters of elevation gain. And when you will go to the descent, you may have a variation of zero to five meters. And why a variation? Because it's not perfect either. Atmospherical pressure change throughout the day. So yeah, that might desort your data slightly. The best watches therefore have in addition, a DEM map a digital elevation model. So a map with the elevation data of every terrestrial coordinate. At the beginning of the activity, your watch will therefore use the GPS to locate you, longitude, latitude, and elevation. And then it's your barometer that will do the job for the elevation with a little recalibration with the DEM map from time to time. With all that, you should have an almost perfect accuracy. Almost because there's nothing perfect in life. Note that the barometers are generally found on the side of the watch so they can breathe fresh air. On some watches, we can find it underneath and it can tremendously distort your data. The thing is, when it's under the watch, you might sweat a little bit because it's a sport watch after all. And if your sweat reach the entrance of the barometer, everything goes wrong. You get the same phenomenon when you go swimming. We agree that the pressure is very different underwater. Well, the barometer will be very affected by it until it dries up. Don't worry, you won't break it, but going swimming in the lake in the middle of your mountain hike clearly risks disordering your data. Finally, if that's something that interests you, most watches equipped with the barometer also have a storm alert. It's directly connected. It's not complicated. When you have a quick drop in pressure, that means there's a storm incoming. So often that's an option that you can enable and disable as you wish. The best watches will allow you to adjust its sensitivity. If it's too high, you will often have false alarm and end up ignoring its alert. Even for that time when the big storm was coming. True story. I personally set it to minimum so it rings only when something big is coming, which is to say almost never. All that to say that if the elevation data is something important for you, make sure you take a watch with the minimum of a power meter. And if it's really, really important for you, take one with a DEM map integrated. Oh, some watches can also read the DEM data in synchronization to your phone. But you know what I think about the importance of having an independent watch. This video was an extract of the most complete sport watch purchase guide on YouTube. If you want to see the full video, you can click just right here. And if you want to see the other extracts, you can click just right there. Otherwise, if you're ready to buy your own watch, you can follow my link in the description. And now would be the time to click somewhere. Like right now.